We're going to look now at some financial mathematics and start by thinking about the idea of interest. Where you give your money to someone and they pay you for it by giving you interest and at the end you get back the original amount plus the interest. And there are two ways of calculating this. One is called simple and the other is compound. Let's look at an example. Suppose you have £100 and you invest it at 10% interest. That means each year you get 10% of what you put in, 10% of 100, which is £10. So each year you earn 10%, which is 10 hundredths of what you put in, so you get £10. So for example, after three years, you'll have earned £30 and your total will be 130 100 plus 30, which is 130. So it's very simple to work out, uh, but it's a bit unfair because after one year, you've actually got 110 pounds and the bank's only paying you for the original 100. So a better way of dealing with this is to use what's called compound interest. And this time, after your first year, you have £110. So the next year, the interest in the second year is 10% of 110 because you've effectively invested £110 with them. And that comes to £11. So you've now got, you started with 100 you gain £10, £10 interest in the first year, then you've got £11 in the next year, so you've now got £121. And in the third year, we, would, we can work out 10% of that, so the interest in the third year is 10% of 121 which is £12 10p, and so the total is 121 plus £12 10, which is £133 10. Under simple interest, it was 130. Under compound interest, it's £133 10 pence. So it's growing a little bit faster. And in fact, that difference gets magnified as time passes. Simple interest just goes up at £10 each year forever and ever. This goes up faster and faster. It's sometimes called exponential growth because the more that you have, the more it grows. Now, this is a rather cumbersome way of calculating compound interest, working out the interest, adding it to what we started the year with. And the quicker way of doing this is to realise that each year we multiply what we started with by 1 plus the interest rate. So another way of doing this would have been to say we started with £100, we multiply by 1 plus the interest rate, or 10 hundredths is 0.1, That gives us 1.1 times 100 takes you to 110. And then we do the same the next year. Each year we multiply by 1 plus the interest rate. So after three years, I will have simply had to multiply by that bracket cubed. So that's 100 times 1.1 cubed, which comes to 100 times 1.331 which is £133 10p. So that's the quicker way of doing compound interest. It's worth having a rough rule of thumb in mind, which is often used uh, in calculations, how long does it take money to double under compound interest? 
Here, it was easy to work out, 10%, 10 pounds each year. So to get up to 200 pounds would have taken 10 years. So the doubling time here is 10 years. There's a very convenient rule of thumb for compound interest, which says that the doubling time is called the rule of 72 because you divide your interest rate into 72. This can be shown by a rather more detailed mathematical calculation. It's not exact, but it's a pretty good approximation for interest rates from, say, 1% to 15%. So in that case, that gives us 7.2 years. So as we expect, it's going to double in rather less time than it would have done under simple interest. So that's compound interest, where the actual interest each year is itself increasing. OK, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.